Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> so, is hello, council. Hello, folks. <coughs> uh, let's just go around and give our names uh, really fast. Do you want to start, uh, Diane? Um, Councilwoman Diane Christ. Joan Pacman. Uh, Councilwoman Yarrow. Um, Susie Lampo Perry, Council. John McCoy, City Council. Aaron Rodriguez, City Council. Harold Dominguez, City Manager. Duncan Thomas Eagle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eugene May, City Attorney. Okay. So, you want to start airing with updates? This is going to be a very fast meeting. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, don't really have any updates. Okay. MGLA, their questions were about our, our conversation concerning parking minimums. Oh. Um, and then also they had a question about which I've already spoken with Farrell about. Um, what does the uh, process look like after a subcontractor or a contractor gets done with a street project? Because some people have complaints about some of the work that's been done. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I said, well, that's not a council policy issue. That's an operations issue. So I don't know if we'd really be making policy concerning that process. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, we've already, in our last meeting, dealt with what they talked about the last time, which was the Project Mustang or House Pad or whatever you want to call it. So we've already dealt with that. Um, as far as Housing and Human Services, they have a special meeting on Thursday uh, to talk about constraints concerning grant funding for 2025. And so we'll find out more about that on Thursday. That's interesting. Oh, there are too many constraints. <laughs> yeah, show me the money. That's what it is. <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. So, uh, Consortium of Cities only meets every other month, so uh, they'll meet next month. Uh, the uh, Longmont uh, Public Media uh, canceled their meeting this month, so they didn't meet. Um, I missed the um, uh, PRAB meeting. Uh, I don't know what was going on. It felt like it was something to do with something that the council was doing on that day. Uh, but, uh, and then uh, uh, last night was the uh, golf course. Mm -hmm. And golf course, uh, they've got some interesting things going. They have a new sprinkler system at uh, Twin Peaks. And before, you know, if the greens themselves, the uh, putting greens uh, needed uh, extra water, you had to do the entire area. But now they have this technology they just got put in on the front nine uh, that uh, allows it to be much more specific about how much water. So we're saving water there. The system, if some, uh, they have sensors in the system now that if the system gets, uh, uh, they notice it's too much water, they can back off on water, saving some water that way and, and things like that. Uh, looking at Ute Creek, uh, they have uh, taken out the the old buildings uh, for the, the maintenance and, and everything like that. They're putting in a new one. They've got some great, uh, before they had uh, their, their, their piles of, of dirt and sand and things like that just in piles. Now they have actually uh, areas like you go to some of these places where they have actually uh, uh, cement kind of uh, barriers in the bottom to them. And so then they don't lose as much of that material uh, to the wind and to other things like that, so that's handy. And uh, then uh, there really have been, uh, despite some of the weather conditions, they've actually had some pretty decent uh, number of rounds, and so they're doing pretty well there. So overall, they're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. That new maintenance facility going? Oh, it so will be. It um, will be soon. That's where they took the buildings down, right? Yeah. yeah so it's still. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not. Oh, they got steel lock. No, oh no, they've got steel. Oh, steel, down. yeah, steel, yeah. It didn't sound like they had the steel lock. That's why yeah. I didn't say that. Like, oh boy, they missed that part. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyhow, that's that's something that's new. Great, go ahead, Susie. Okay, so um, we did get during the museum advisory board meeting, we did get a presentation on the uh, expansion. Mm -hmm. So I don't have printout of it. But I will be happy to pass my laptop around. It's really quite phenomenal. So, um, yeah, but we'll do that. So, you know, it's mostly kind of asking questions around that. I think in all the arts and public places, the um, 
library and museum, again, there was a lot of concern around getting new people to apply. Um, I think in the museum and library, yeah, both of those, they'll have vacant seats because not enough applicants have come in. So it really minimizes the opportunity to be able to, um, to be for, for um, board members to miss a day because then they won't meet quorum. Uh, yeah. So um, one of the um, um, board members from the li library advisory board had asked about so the Longmont Housing Authority that there was an advertisement she saw on um, the leader and wanted to know if that's an option for other board members. But those are, aren't those paid? So the advertisement. You had for all boards. For all this. boards. Okay, so she saw that specific one or she, I don't know. There's a different cycle, but we do it Okay, for all. okay. All. So I will let, I will let them know that there, those were out there as well. So, you know, just how can we get folks to, to apply? To apply. Yeah, so if I could add, Susie. Yes. We have a council member over here. We yeah. have a, a large list of all the ways we recruit and advertise. Yeah. Yes. And mail it out. We do it for every recruitment. Yeah. And, and you know, I had said, you know, I see it on my social media feeds for yeah. Facebook, Instagram. Because so we boost those. We boost those. those. So I, I mm -hmm. see those. Yeah. Regular. So, so that was you know people aren't looking but again it's one of those things like it gets to the point when you're organizing or trying to get the new word out I mean you practically have to knock door to door yeah. knock on each ever every single door and ask them personally and at least three times because they'll forget right. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a challenge so I think those two boards really had articulated that that frustration of like how do we get more people coming in um, so that was the museum, the library, uh, you know, they're talking about the recruitment. And then uh, they voted on approving the budget needs. So what they want to present to, to Harold, or I guess, so what is it, the two, level two and level one. So level one is must pay, bills. Must, must pay bills. And then the level two items, and mm -hmm. you know, they showed, he shared with the board, or uh, John shared with the board, the. Um, priorities and the board came to a consensus so they did say that they would put out an email great um, to all of council um, letting know what the priorities were and <coughs> statement on that, that component um, yeah I think there wasn't much I think in the, the art and public places I'm trying to go back on memory and look in my notes uh, there was a great discussion on the wrapped traffic boxes there's a little, um, they're, what they're looking to do is add a little QR code so when you are at those traffic boxes and you see the vinyl wrap around there, you can actually. Those are vinyl wrap? They're not they're painted? No, they're vinyl wraps. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and so they're, you'd be able to scan the QR code and get a history, so oh, get context okay. on the, the images that they see there. So that'll be working its, its way down the, the pike. And then a couple of dates to keep in mind if you're interested. Uh, the Clover Meadows Park is having their artist proposal presentations on June 4th. And the Fox Meadows Park, um, the artist proposal presentations will happen on July 22nd. Um, I'm not right where they were going to be at. <laughs> well, I will ask and I'll have to send it out to you. <laughs> I was so proud I got those dates and notes on. But um, yeah, so that was, that was cool. it. There was just a lot of you know, moving board from picking the next chair and doing all the, the work of the, uh, the ins and outs. Thanks. Uh -huh. Why do you think there's fewer applicants for library and museum? I don't know. I don't think there'd be a lot of interest there. Is it the time to do the meeting? No, they meet in the, the afternoon. I mean, that's why I, I'm able to do it, because they meet at 6.30, 4.30. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Longmont Sister Cities, um, just all of, the, all of the students are working together. They, because I talked about how I want the students to, they have to go over to the whatever, uh, place where the, the students are going, whether it's uh, Mexico or Japan, they do a, a dance from here. Mm -hmm. And 
So now they're going to have a choreographer, all of them together, and they're going to do the same dance. Hallelujah. So, um, <laughs> oh, okay. They're going to do that. And they're, of course, in the fundraising mode right now. The parents are. Um, and so we got tick everybody got tickets, but they're right now fundraising. So everything has been reserved, at least I know, for, um, for everything. So right now, everybody are. All the parents and everything are in fundraising mode. Um, and let's see, tab meeting I just had June 26th is Bike to Work Day, live music and food is going to be at the Senior Center, I believe. Um, and I believe they're going to have, is that right, Senior Center, uh, Don? I think so. Okay. Yeah, uh, down to the. Bike to Work. Oh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had front range passenger rail presentation, um, and there was a lot. It was a lot going on. Um, they are taking surveys. I don't. I never got the ticket thing back again, so I don't have it. Um, oh, I, I took the rest of them. No, 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 no. Just the original one. I wanted to. I'll get it emailed out to all the counselors to take a survey as to what they want to see and on that little survey it's like a regular ticket they they let you know what stops they're going to stop at and um, I don't even I hadn't even taken the survey yet because I just wanted to make sure um, the mayor and I were at coffee with council and so we passed those out um, during coffee with council so people can take those surveys um, and the, I know the Italian pizza place is opening up downtown. They're working on it, almost done, which is really good. Um, yeah, so, oh, and then third, we have NADA on this coming Thursday. So the meeting will be a month later. And last time I think I already talked about we had a retreat. Yeah, and they talked about the history and all of that stuff. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then they did bring up uh, back to front range, front range passenger rail. They did talk about the three House Bill ten twelve Well County. Um, these are my notes, so I'm just yeah. House, House Bill ten twelve Senate Bill one eighty four and Senate Bill two thirty. Um, those are the bills that they're supporting and um, he was really talking a lot about 230 Senate Bill 230 would uh, create three new funds some clean transit enterprise CDOT 20% um, dedicated for passenger rail needs and it'll cost around 300 billion dollars they have not completed their service development plan and they are trying to uh, from my understanding, the, gov the governor is trying to decide if they want to put this on the ballot, or... You just covered my hole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I'll let you complete that, no, then... Um, no, you're fine. So, um, another thing, too, they're talking about buying the trains. That's another thing. Um, it could be 10 year time frame before we can get trains as well. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, there's a, I have a lot of notes. So, but I'm sure Mayor, you're gonna cover the rest. <laughs> and that was Andy Carcian and Chrissy Brett, Brett from Chief of Staff, yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, just to piggyback off of that because this um, was made first so it's kind of early on as the North I-25 coalition which um, the bus tank platform is set to open in the fall that's, uh, the, that's the one in Weld County right that's the one on I-25 between here and the Firestone it's great we're just mm -hmm. having a little trouble with the north platform the northbound platform um, they um, the SB 24-184 did pass and uh, they were successful in amending it so that they were able to keep their toll revenue. They built a toll road north going up to 
Loveland, which, by the way, is free um, until fall. So if you want to go try it out. Um, and then um, they were also excited that the uh, House Bill 1313, the corridor density bill, um, they stripped off the HEPA of funding loss and also removed the th threat of a lawsuit if you don't comply. So um, they mentioned that um, House Bill 32, there's ozone-free communities, and they're working on funding for fares and maybe like a statewide pass. So if you're taking RTD, you can also take bus dang, you can also take front range passenger rail, and without having to buy one from each um, organization. So they're doing a, a statewide pass study um, so that we can have a seamless access to the system. Now, interestingly enough, there was an article regarding uh, 229 and 230 about oil and gas offering funding for transit. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Not happy. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, hear, we'll hear the count, uh, point counterpoint. There you go. Um, uh, visit Longmont. They are having a Monty the Long Monster costume design. <laughs> to mm -hmm. show up at events, uh, and they're always looking for someone to wear the costume. <laughs> <laughs> I think Eugene is tall enough for it. Yeah, yeah. Too, too tall. Too tall. You know, incognito on the event, maybe that's a big to do. Uh, recent surveys indicate that visitors to Longmont are 49 and a half years age on average, and the highest travel is between May to October. Mm -hmm. This was interesting. Uh, so we discussed more ways to bring travel during the winter. We are having that ice climbing event that um, got signed. And uh, they're discussing a partnership with the air show in September mm -hmm. to offer, you know, microtransit is going to be a big thing, and then also maybe offer maps so that not everybody goes to the same restaurant, but, you know, it's dispersed throughout the city. And then they're also discussing or um, looking at a TID, which is a tran um, tourism tax mm -hmm. district. We'll see. We'll see about that. Um, let's see. Then the, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that kind of relate to the budgeting that's coming up. Uh, for one, the LEDP, we had front range passenger rail there. There was a vigorous skepticism <laughs> <laughs> and um, lots of questions. Mm -hmm. But I think what is interesting, and I'm sorry I didn't have, um, I wasn't at a place where I could make copies, but um, Elevate, which is part of LEDP, uh, put out some data about Longmont. They gave me my extra copy, and I know Harold has one. What is interesting about this uh, well, there's, is the relationships, I think, between the information. One, they said the population is 106,000 in Longmont now. Um, there are those six people. I, uh, um, I mentioned that because it comes up in our uh, housing authority packet about our population. We actually are bigger than older now, um, or right about the same. Uh, out of that, the labor force is 59,000 and almost 500, and the school district has 31,000 enrolled, which means there's only 15,000 people that aren't working, which um, is only 14 percent, 14 and a half percent of the population is not working. Well, wait a minute, those 31,000 in SBPSD, those, those are the employees? Uh, no, or those are enrollments. So, so it's children. So they're, they're not enrolled, enrolled but they not enrolled be, or retired or maybe unemployed. Well, you know, 18-year-olds could be working. Yeah. This was the SBVSD enrollment, according to the school district. Um, that, that seems to support national data that people working to 75 have the same conversation in GERP, mm -hmm. the retirement pension funds. So like all of these topics overlap, so bear with me. What was interesting about this is the median family income and from HUD, according to uh, Elevate Longmont, is uh, 144,100. And that the um, average earnings per job is 84,000, which means that most families work in 1.7 jobs. And if the median family income is 144,000, I mean, you really can't afford more than a $300,000 home qualify for that. And um, 
that was also resonated in our um, retirement and pension funds that they're saying that employment is staying steady, whereas you know inflation's all over the place. And so what seems to be true is that this is a a standard that's somewhat not really changing with inflation. Um, there was a people power presentation from the state. Economic and Demography Department of DOLA. That was on April 24th. And some of the planning um, group was there. There was a set of slides that I sent to Harold. I think the planning department got it. But he was saying that we are aging. The 65 plus group is expanding. He says the only studies births, deaths, jobs, and migration. Migration being travel between states. And um, the birth rate is slowing down to the point of a negative population growth and we're going to have to rely on migration for future growth and this kind of relates to one that i heard 10 years ago from his predecessor who said that generation z would be smaller would have to be more efficient to produce as much as generation x did so once back to elevation or uh, can elevate you send, can you make can you get all of that to to Dawn so that we can sure. share that mm -hmm. same information, yeah. that would be nice. I know, yeah. the slides are, well, some of the some of the softer businesses that came out of there said that was a lot of data. It is all color-coded, you all won't have any trouble with it. Um, and then this, I think, is very interesting. This have to be, you know, this at average, you need to relate them together, but median numbers, as Harold and I discussed, were more relevant in some ways. But the gross national uh, regional product is nine billion dollars. So uh, one of the ways to help with inflation is to increase production. And it looks like if, um, based on the earnings, everybody's producing about 150 thousand per employee in the town. So they went up to 200 thousand. We could actually affect inflation in town. A more reasonable level. I know. Be more efficient, just what they said at yeah. <laughs> the State Department. So I'm like, okay. Interesting information that I think will be useful when we start seeing the budget or stuff. We can make it a little more fun. Like it that way. Um, I think all for me. I don't think I had anything else going on except for uh, Joan and Marcia and I participated in the leadership panel for the um, government day of the city. And that a lot of conversation there was about transportation as well. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. And one thing we didn't get to mention was Vision Zero. I thought about that after. They were concerned that microtransit, based on how much ridership on buses, that microtransit would not be as viable. However, I see Flex Ride and Via being overwhelmed. So, thank you. It's a pilot program. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and we said we needed their feedback, constant yeah. feedback, as, as we move forward. It's working, it's not working, and how can we change it? So, yeah. yeah, that was good. It was interesting. So, uh, I sent out to each of you a uh, series of ethics of behavior or conduct. Mm -hmm. um, and just so you have it, if you want to put it in rules of procedure or take uh, parts of it out for rules of procedure, it's up to the council. Mm -hmm. I just think going forward and some of the things that have happened that have been labeled free speech at different places, uh, I, I think it would be a good idea, just in my opinion, if we discussed at some point, not tonight, um, mm -hmm. are we as leaders of the city above certain uh, ways of rules of behavior and conduct? Mm -hmm. Do we do we act differently in the public, in the events, or whatever, uh, as far as engaging with the public? I think mean, you guys know what I mean on some areas. But if you're interested next year or whatever, mm -hmm. then we should talk about it because when, last year when I brought up the ethics, we also brought up the rules of procedure. So, mm -hmm. so by the way, Marcia is still in New York, mm -hmm. right? And uh, she was going to join us, but didn't. So uh, 
The only thing that I am really working on is that front range passenger rail because it is involved in Dr. Cog and RPD and NADA with the governor's office. It's, it's huge. So uh, I'll give what we've been doing that is a little bit different than what uh, Shakita said. Today we had our governance meeting. There are different groups, finance, governance, planning, and um, this, this discussion was around station locations because when we do the service development plan, we have to have our locations. Uh, in SB 138, when the governor statutorily created FRPR, he said where the night stations were going to be, but all it was just locations for cities. Mm -hmm. But now each city has to decide within their city where these stations are going to be, and are the platforms going to be uh, low platforms, high platforms, are you going to be able to take bicycles on, are you going to have walkers, uh, dogs, uh, I mean, I thought it would just be build station, <laughs> but it's not, it's pretty involved. Uh, and some of the jurisdictions, especially um, Colorado Springs, uh, Pueblo's in it in a different, uh, they pretty much have a station, I'm not sure it's what we want, because of the Southwest Chief. Um, and that's where we would switch from FRPR to the Southwest Chief to go to San Francisco. So uh, that, it's a huge conversation and, and before we can do the plan and actually get some of these dollars, uh, we have to have all of that done so each city is trying to figure out, even on Mont, where are these going to be, what is the station going to look like, uh, and plan that. So it's a huge deal. But well, we're ahead of the game. Still. Yeah, we are ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. We're still ahead of the game. We're always ahead of the game. But, but what concerns me is what Shakita said about uh, the trains. They mm -hmm. don't have the, the, the locomotives to... So that is true that we do have to buy them, but... Um, I'll let you go and then. There, there used to be more places in Colorado, in the United States, that actually made trains. Mm -hmm. And there are, we know that in LC. Mm -hmm. and, was that where we were? Yeah. So um, that's part of the problem right now. But we're not going to get this done tomorrow. No. And they're making the trains now. But we do get, and this is what the survey is about as well. What do you want the train to look like? If they're going to make them for us, what do you want in them? Do you want internet service? Do you want uh, a place, uh, a car just for bicycles? Um, brewery? Yeah, brewery. Um, oh, it's, oh, I was thinking it was the locomotive that they were short, not the pardon? not the cars. I was thinking it was the locomotive they were behind on. Not it's the everything. It's, it's a train everything. set. Yeah, the whole set. It's the whole set. set. So um, that discussion is going on, but that is a later discussion because our discussion today was, was choosing an operator. Mm -hmm. There, when, um, when the governor came out with the SB 138, the discussion was all about Amtrak because Amtrak has a lease with BNSF on the tracks. However, FRPR is an entity, um, up to its own and we get to decide who operates it. Mm -hmm. So last week, last month, uh, at our meeting, um, Amtrak presented and it was a very in-depth presentation of what they would do, what they would offer, pricing, um, it just went on and on and on. As far as fares, the local entity gets to decide what the fares are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but before Amtrak had a one a one thing fits all, one price. And now they're looking at different levels of pricing um, as they learn more and more about being a passenger rail system. Um, the interesting thing that, that I told Harold and we've been working on is that Loveland and Fort Collins do not have anybody on the board. So I've been sending them stuff they didn't even know was happening. So we have conversations <coughs> with them, and they are now pretty excited about being able to, to plan, and we're going to have another big meeting with them and the mayors who were not on that uh, 
meeting about uh, what kind of grants are available, what is their station going to look like, all of the things that everybody else is discussing. So I guess we are the ones going with the North. Yeah, and see, and that's what's frustrating because when I learned that too, th I mean, that's going to put set everything behind because they don't even have all the information, let alone a station, an idea of a station. So, I mean, we got to get them up to par. They got to get money. And they, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, well, Harold, Harold and I are working with them and having, we're having another meeting planned, but this other part I'm going to tell you about, we want to have it first and then go mm -hmm. bring it to uh, Fort Collins and Loveland, their engineers, their uh, operations, and their mayors. And the other interesting thing about, uh, is it Loveland or Estes Park? It was Estes Park, they got a new mayor. Loveland has an Estes. interim mayor. I know so, that just because he's yeah. you know, on Northside 25 Coalition. He's an interim mayor. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of his name. It's Jenny. Jenny Artis Fort Collins. Who's the model? Uh, Jackie Marsh. Jackie Marsh. So it was uh, Estes Park. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the, they have to be brought up to date. They don't even know what's going on. So we're taking on that role. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that they're in discussion is uh, we are at our last governance meeting. The gentleman, and I can't remember his last name, but his name was Jeff from Cheyenne, Wyoming was there. And they're very interested in this North Rail as well. So we want to pull them into the conversation because they are trying to go after their service, no, corridor ID plan next year in 2025 when there's another tranche of money being put out to do that. And that corridor ID plan was where we got our first $500,000 to decide what the corridor was going to look like. Um, so I said that Amtrak came to our last meeting this Thursday. The Association of Independent Rail Operators are going to be at our meeting. It's just an association that uh, I'd like a management company that has a whole bunch of uh, apartment buildings under their management company. They have independent rail operators. The rail operators, I'm very interested in hearing from them, but I personally am skeptical. This is my bias mm -hmm. because some of those rails that um, those train were purchased by um, venture capitalist companies. Mm. If they were for sale, if they were being, if they were not doing well, then venture capitalists would buy them. That doesn't mean that they're not good. I don't understand that. Mm. And I personally am hesitant to go with someone that we, uh, I don't want to be the the uh, guinea pig. Yeah, I was thinking of spring. No, yeah. I've got a paper when I'm talking about. Yeah. The ones that were in that code, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam thing. So, um, <laughs> pot belly pig. I, I, mean, I, I don't want to be the pot belly pig. No, so, um, it'll be interesting to hear from them, but they don't have big names. They, I don't know why have leases with BNSF. Why should we not go with the best? So um, it'll be interesting to hear from them, but the board has to decide that. Mm -hmm. Here's the other piece that is with 184. Um, in 184 and part of SB 230, the governor has somewhat mandated that uh, RTD build the Northwest Corridor. But then in, in 184, there is a part of it that's hard to explain that from Fort Longmont to Fort Collins, RTD was to bring them into the district the way Andy Carson interprets it. I don't interpret it that way at all. That they're going to and operate it from Fort Co from Loveland to Fort Collins and no from Longmont to Fort Collins. And I said, but they're not in the RTD district. But that's why they're trying to create this power 
district develop an IGA to that's different oh that's a different one that's okay. very different and this is why it's confusing mm. so I've had uh, conversations with Eric Davidson and we'll have lunch with him on through on Friday because he's confused about it as well what it actually says and I emailed all my questions to Deborah Johnson the director of RTD to say this is what it says and then she answered but basically what that means is that they could operate it if they want to, but it would not be pulled into the district. Because to go into the district, that has to be a vote of the people. And I sent that all of that uh, highlighted and my questions to Deborah, to the mayors of both Loveland and Fort Collins, and they said, have you read this? <laughs> Do you want to be in the district? Mm -hmm. I don't interpret it this way but this is the way FRPR is interpreting it. So what I'm trying to do is work with RTD, Loveland Fort Collins, and FRPR, and say, we have to get this straight. What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. So um, if they, so I asked Deborah, if you are the operator from Longmont to Fort Collins, who pays for the operations and maintenance on that line? Because they are in the FRPR district. That makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So according to SB 30, and Lisa Kaufman is supposed to send me all of the pieces of that that say what it's supposed to be, is that um, the state will give them operating money. Now why, that makes no sense to me, because FRPR is supposed to be getting operating money mm -hmm. from the federal government not from the state. Mm -hmm. So you can see how confusing this is. Well, you should have heard what he, his excuse about the federal money, talking about people never use this amount of money. They don't know how to distribute the money. Uh, they never had to distribute this amount of money before. And I said, hold up. We just got out of a <laughs> pandemic. So people had to learn how to distribute money real quick, fast, mm -hmm. and hurry. So you telling me they don't know how to distribute money? Are you serious? And then he said they went to Dallas. Uh, Fort Worth for about the the plan and um, and so they're talking with uh, BNSF that's what BNSF is at and now they're talking about getting a, some more consultants or consult I said listen how many consultants have you all gotten already and what are you doing with the mm -hmm. consultants what is the, what are the results yeah. and I, I said is being someone asked on the advisory board is BNSF uh, contributing financially and he was like no and I was like did anybody ask BNSF you going all the way to Fort Worth to talk to him you didn't ask him for no money <laughs> yeah it was a, a little frustrating meeting mm -hmm. to me because I felt like they just kept making excuses yeah. and they're trying to wait to see to put this on the ballot so what is the point the 23 cent per every $100 that's what they're trying to get a tax in order to pay for I think it's zero point, point zero two three. Point zero two three. It's not twenty three. I would love twenty three cents, but that is not true. Point zero two three. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that, that is what point that's what Polis wants. That's what he wants. Oh, yeah. Point zero two three. So point zero hundred dollars, right? So I was excited, and this is just barely in the works, but it's a discussion that the chair of FRPR wants to have he emailed me today and said yeah let's do this um jeff from cheyenne we're going to do an mou with them yeah and um he said and i had heard this four or five years ago from another person randy grauberger is his name who's been in rail colorado rail every forever he's very smart um the discussions between up and bnsf about five or six years ago was that because of a rule that was made in the 60s they can share their lines they don't have to go used to be that they had to get congressional okay on that mm -hmm. but now they don't if i understood it correctly so what they are working on and this is to be an sf's uh, uh to their credit be, they want to move all the freight out of Colorado basically but this area the district mm -hmm. Boulder County up to Union Station and reroute it all the way around 
uh, green east to the east, yeah. And coming into Longmont, switching it from going the freight from going through our city mm -hmm. to go east and around that way, which is a huge benefit because we're supposed to share the line mm -hmm. with freight. And one of the reasons that, from my understanding, that BNSF wants to do it is because of the risk factor going through towns and the uh, the speed. They can't get the speed mm -hmm. they need for freight. They're not making timelines, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are in those discussions as well. Mm -hmm. um, I could go on and on, but what's the point? <laughs> so one of the things that I um, Oh my gosh. Uh, no, we have 15 minutes. Hmm. So one of the things, I talked to Andy Carcian on the phone Monday. He checks in every once in a while. He, he keeps saying we are working through. And I brought it up on the meeting today when they gave uh, the uh, re updates on everything. He said we are working through this and we are working through that and we are working through. And I stopped him and I said that doesn't mean anything to me. What are you talking about? And I asked Andy, you're supposed to be having a meeting between RTD and CDOT. Are you doing a meeting sitting down in the room with everybody discussing this? Or are these one-off phone calls to, C to CDOT, to RTD? To he said they're one-off phone calls. And I said, so each entity is not hearing what the other one said. So I brought that up on the meeting today and I got three thumbs up really from the other people on the board. There's only there were only six or seven of us. It was a committee. Um, I said you need to all sit down in the same room. CDOT, RTD, FRPR, the governor's office, and um, legal. And hammer this out because you are supposed to be either an IGA with the three entities having an IGA or a power authority. I don't think what's happening is unusual at all. We're trying to build a railroad and the ones who know how to build the railroad are the ones we're trying to contact mm -hmm. and do it right. So, um, we had to wait until the legislation came down because we didn't know what the government was going to do with all these bills. So now that everything's signed and delivered, it's going to be hit, hit the road hard, make motions, make decisions, and, and go at it as hard. Um, I like boards and councils that are active. I don't like people just taking seats and filling them. Mm -hmm. And out of our 15-member board, I would say there's probably four people that are, and that's the same with RTD, that really are interested in working hard. Um, that's going to change. The governor wants to reduce all these boards, have them smaller, have people who are very interested mm -hmm. and want to work. So um, the vote. We were supposed to, according to the governor, go to the ballot this November. Um, we're not ready. And one of the reasons we're not ready is that, and I brought it up, I said I'm not happy with SB 230 because I work very hard in getting fracking out of Longmont and, and our city has moved very hard in getting the wells out of here. So to turn around and say we're going to use those dollars yeah. to build this railroad, I have to say that people blew up at me. And I said, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I told them on the board, I'm very unhappy about it. I do not support this. Mm -hmm. But that was before it passed. But now that it's passed, we have to use it. Mm -hmm. So the linchpin for me in getting the vote, because this is going to be an incredible train. It's going to be amazing is getting the freight out of here. That would make people happy if we could get the freight out and they mm -hmm. would. So that's why I'm working really hard on it. Because they're not happy about, you know, 350.org, um, the Sierra Club and Earthworks bought, at, bought into Polis's thing, so. Mm -hmm. 
but there are other organizations that are just unhappy that really we're going to use. So anyway, um, that's it. We're probably at Thursday's meeting going to decide should we go in 26 for the vote, which is an off year. Um, I would like to go in 25. Andy wants to go in 26. I know my reasons why he wants to go there, which aren't worth saying. Mm -hmm. I think that if we wait too long, he's telling me the service delivery plan will take two years. No, it should not. It should be done. It could be done by January if they got it together. So getting RTD to do their part is really hard, and uh, this is why I'm talking to Eric, because he needs to know what FRPR is doing. If we're all going to work together, we have to know what each other's doing. Um, he's, uh, RTD is waiting for the feasibility study, for the fiscal part of it, uh, for the Northwest Corridor. I said, why is it BNSF giving you that? And he said, because they're confused. They don't know who's asking for it. Is FRPR working? And the reason they're confused mm -hmm. is because the three entities are supposed to be working together. And if BNSF is e evaluating the cost, how big of a cost are they evaluating? But Eric is right. Uh, RTD already paid for it. They should have it. So that's another part I'm going to push hard on BNSF give RTD the feasibility study mm -hmm. so they can start working this out. Good. Well, actually, remember, Harold, when uh, Brian and that whole group went to Fort Worth? Mm -hmm. Fort Worth on the peak study was ready to go. It just was saying. RTD. That wasn't, they just will not move. But the governor, I, I heard from Somebody from the governor's office that I talked to said that if RTD is not ready for January, by January they're going to mandate and just take it over. And they can statutorily. They were created statutorily, just like FRPR was. Do you mean they'd separate RTD from the project? No, um, the bill that did not pass, it didn't even make it out of committee, and I forget the number of that bill, but it was the one that was going to redo RTD, cut down the, uh, the, number, of the number of board seats. They were going to be appointed. They were going to be, some would be elected, some would be appointed, but it would be no more than seven or eight. We should put Don the Don on there. During LEDP, he had great questions, some of which could not be answered. And he said, so <clears throat> this isn't going to happen until what did they say something? He said it was so funny. He said, so, um, this isn't going to happen until, or, or this will only happen until everything falls apart and it doesn't happen <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> and it was like, yeah. yeah. Uh, the governor has put a ton of money toward this. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, it is going to happen. Um, we just need to get all the players on the same happen. Mm -hmm. Harold has been great working with me on it and Phil Greenwald and um, we're just kind of making our own little committee <laughs> on the slide. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the tea leaves are saying if there's not movement, I would guess by September. Mm -hmm. The going to Smackdowns are going to start. No, the heads are going to roll. And so part of it, I know Councilmember Yarborough got a grant said something. BNSF, CDOT, and Longlock are working on a grant application for an off-grade rail crossing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also a planning grant. So there's a lot of work being done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, the question, you know, there's, when Andy presented to LEP, there's stuff that I had to jump in on. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could do it in a year. This, oh, absolutely. This is not hard. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, to Don's questions, there's certain questions you can't answer mm -hmm. just because the money's going to dictate it because mm -hmm. 
they won't talk to you unless they know the money's appropriated. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, there is a chicken, I mean, we know the egg comes first and the yes. egg's the appropriation before the real companies will really talk to you. But, you know, there's, there's, they're putting money into this. A huge amount of money. And um, I, I wanted to just share, because I know you're going to get asked questions, of how hard it is to get the, I would say, the base of what this is all going to be together, first of all. And um, I don't think that FRP are moved fast enough. However, they did need to wait for the legislation. So, because there were too many groups working on different parts of the legislation, no one knew where this was going to end up. So now that that has been done. Well, full we disclosure, I did tell them they need to hire our staff as consultants. Which, our staff? I did. Phil and all. I mean, yeah. I did. Thank you, Shakita. I said, you know, <laughs> I said, instead of hiring other st uh, consultants, I said, you got them right here. I said, yeah, we don't. I'm sorry I pimped them out, but. Well, <laughs> that, that's, that's part of what we're doing. It's part of what we're going to meet with the other communities is talking about rail. And yeah. so the, the governor's office wants us to kind of talk about what we've done and how we're positioned and, and different projects related to siding and connecting some of the dots. So that's part of the meeting that the mayor's talking about is mayor's city managers plan transportation planners on the northern corridor so we could get in line. Mm -hmm. We should be sending a proposal to the governor on some consultants. I mean we shouldn't be giving out information for free. I know we all gotta work together but it's not our fault that they're not up on the street. Up to speed. Oh, you know, to come join the board. <laughs> <laughs> I need another loud voice. So yeah. I will say I think that's what's helping us on some of these transportation projects. So mm -hmm. you know, when you partner with the railroad, the state, and the city on a multi-million-dollar product, you know, transit-oriented development, it's probably a different way of doing it, but leveraging it for different state funding to, to be more positive or to bring things to our community. So I would say that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And just like any other huge organization, you've got egos that get in the way in politics. And that's why they all need to sit down in the same room and hash it out. They need a mediator. Sandy. No one wants to like she can't <laughs> say it. We have the staff. We have the staff. <laughs> So that's basically all I got, and Thank all you. I got. Uh, but I did find out, I did know this, I emailed Melinda Stevens and Dr. Cog right before I came. I find, found out at their meeting, Rex, uh, Doug Rex, the director, said, because we was talking about fast tracks, and they gave an update on fast tracks, which I didn't agree with, because it wasn't what I've been hearing for years. And um, he said, whatever fast tracks does Dr. Cog has to okay? And I know I misinterpreted that, so I emailed Melinda and said, "Can you have somebody call me and clarify that?" Because I didn't understand it correctly. But basically, the guy who presented on fast tracks, what Doug was saying, calm the room down, was it doesn't matter because Dr. Cog has to weigh in on this first. And maybe because it's federal funding, but I don't know. I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. Let's see if she answered any that. So that's all I've got, mm -hmm. which is more than enough, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you know there's an NPL connection, so I don't know that they have oversight, but oh, it's, that work, would be it's it. working with the NPO, so that would be the Northern NPO with Lovin for Collins. And then Dr. I think that may be what he's referencing. I'm sure it, I just have never understood it. But I don't know that they have to prove it. Phil will know the answer to that one. I will. So 
what Don had always said was the way it comes together is for it to seem like nothing's going to come together. Yeah. Well, everybody said, yeah, that's, that's exactly the way what it, we heard. Yeah. But I think we, we are pushing to make it come together because it has to. The confusion really is, is that the primary inner city rail is what is the driver, and that's where they're going to use the price of dollars that are already coming in from Denver to Longmont, and why they need the increases. And CDOT may put money in to help get it to Fort Collins, but they need the increase to help operationalize that. And that'll be the inner city rail that will go to Loveland, Fort Collins, Longmont, Boulder, Denver. Mm -hmm. RTD's connection that's causing all the confusion is they could run a commuter line and that's where that legislation gives them the ability to run a commuter line in between the inner city rail but you can't you've got to start with the inner city rail because that's what's going to leverage the federal dollars that are that's setting up DC because they can't use it for the commuter rail. Right. So are we going to own those rails? No. Then why are we doing a capital improvement on BNSF's property on their equipment? Probably because they have an easement. Well, actually, that's well, I mean the railroad easement. So the, that's, that's part of it is it's too expensive if you have to build your own line. So that's right. part of the agreement. Going I mean, back to, to the operator. Point, why are we not asking for a little bit of well, here's partnership the, there for the capital? Here's the other thing: when they when you when you were on the train. They had to go so slow because if they didn't go slow, they would uh, uh, probably jump the tracks or some other thing like that because it was too heavy and so they have to do the upgrade. Right, right. Yeah. It's from going from freight rail yeah. to right. passenger so train rail, rail speed that's needed. So it sounds like they have to upgrade the entire system. Are right, we going to pay for time on the rail or we're going to uh, well, pay for uh, train kit? No. This is a question. Some of the questions are asked. Amtrak leases has the lease from BNSF. Okay. We don't lease that. But we pay we pay the operator to run the service. And that comes from all of the funding that is out there now, as well as the cost of the tickets. Um, which is why we need to uh, have some kind of a tax or how we're going to fund it from the residents. So how do we sell that to the residents is the marketing. How do we sell that to them? Um, yeah, and it's, that's kind of the operator question where the mayor and I talked about this. Amtrak already has an agreement to run a BNSF draft. Right. So why are you considering an operator that doesn't have an agreement, and then you're going to have to negotiate it so there's some decision points that I think are clear in certain areas, and I think that's what everybody has to work through. Then why can't we just use their training thing? That's. And we're we not. We can't. That we was might. the question. If we don't have a train kit, we wouldn't, you know, use their. No, training. they that's where Andy Scott comes in. Okay. Andy Scott is the one who says we can't do it. Okay. Yes. If you choose Amtrak. Amtrak already has. The training kit. Right. 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 And they already have the agreement with BNSF. Amtrak can run on any BNSF line in the United States, right? Because of another another agreement, and that's what's causing all the confusion. Right. Which there was a lot of confusion oh, in this yeah. presentation. So, right so the Shakita's point of view, we always teach in business and marketing class. Ask for the business, and what we need to do is ask. To your point, ask for the business, and we're not asking for the business. So that's so. Oh. Sorry. I guess we're running over. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody. That was more information than you needed, probably. But I don't know how to get it out there, except for that.